What a great privilege to be with you tonight. My neighbors and friends, it's so great to celebrate our kindred spirits in this hour. And I want to thank your remarkable pastor for the invitation. Holy Mother of Harris. <laughs> yeah, wow, thank you. And now, O oh Lord, open our minds that we may hear your word as good news, and our hearts that we may be moved by your spirit to live it together. Amen. Hear now the word of the gospel from Luke chapter two. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. This is the word of the Lord. So the cartoon captured the moment. Mary is sitting on a donkey, glaring at Joseph in that way, you know, that all husbands fear and dread. She says to him, what do you mean there's no room at the inn? You had one job. <laughs> you didn't make a reservation? So the journey of the Holy Family to Bethlehem, where they find no room at the inn, is one of the most poignant stories in the nativity, isn't it? And I wanna say tonight to you, I think it's one of the most spiritually telling. It shouldn't surprise us that this is the heart of the Christmas story for people of Mexican descent on both sides of the border. You're probably familiar with Las Posadas. Las Posadas means the inns. This Christmas tradition lasts nine days between December 16th, December 16th, and 24th, the nine days representing the nine months of Mary's pregnancy. And each night, neighbors and friends go wandering the streets, you know, from house to house, reenacting this in a sense, and uh, it re imagining, again, how the, the Holy Family was seeking shelter in Bethlehem in that travel nightmare that ended with the Son of God being born in a stable because, as our translation puts it, there was no place for them in the inn. People who feel placeless especially relate to this dimension of the Christmas story. Homeless people, displaced people, people who've never found their place. And even those of us who find ourselves between places or who aren't sure of our places anymore, that should cover most of us, don't you know? It does me, this Christmas. I mean, you are a welcome stable for me tonight. Just down the street is another church with a tall steeple where for 33 years I was in my place on Christmas Eve at home, behind my pulpit, telling a Christmas story like this to my church family. And right now, they are gathered there, doing just as we are here, and someone else is in my pulpit. 
mind you, they haven't kicked me out or turned me away, but to have known your place in the world so well, and then, you know, whether by your own choice as it was with me, or by someone else's choice as it may be for some of you tonight, to have no sense of place is disorienting, isn't it? For some of you tonight, Christmas Eve is a joyous gathering of families of blood and spirit, both, and you feel settled in. You know your place, and I don't wanna take that away from you. If that's your experience tonight, I only want to remind you, friends, that authentic faith is always more of a journey than a destination, huh? When faith gets too settled down, it loses something vital and too often can become violent. See, if you start out with the idea that you're supposed to be completely at home in the world, to have a settled place, you'll do everything possible to secure it. And if you're lucky enough to succeed, like living a few blocks away from here, as I do, in a house that screams settled, right? you might think you've arrived. But even then, my house, where Kim and I live, that we built 17 years ago, it has 88 piers under the house that drill down to bedrock as much as 24 feet, right? We did everything we could to give it a firm foundation. And yet, just now, we are in search for locksmiths. Because the house has settled, as they say. It really has unsettled, right? Which is, is the way life is. The ground has shifted beneath the house that we did all we could to make secure, and it has knocked the latches off kilter to the point where some doors, right now, don't even close. See, you might think you're settled, that you have your place, but if it's not nature that unsettles you, it'll be human nature. A loved one dies, a spouse says, that he or she doesn't love you anymore, or a way of life you loved is taken from you by ill health or an ill economy. This is the way of the world, the nature of reality, movement, change. I mean, the Greek philosopher Heraclitus saw this 2,500 years ago, challenging his inherited static view of the universe when he said that it is the very nature of reality to that things change. The world is constantly in flux, he claimed, and he coined the memorable phrase that no one steps into the same river twice. Impermanence is permanent. Change is the only constant. I wonder if that's something we're supposed to learn from this Christmas story. Our security is not in a place, whether geographical or otherwise. It's in a person. Our security is in the God who came among us as one without a place, who lived among us as one without a home. John's gospel says that he came unto his own and his own received him not. In Luke's gospel, we're told that Jesus' Nazareth neighbors tried to throw him off the cliff when he declined hometown loyalty. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus says that foxes have holes and birds of the nest have Uh, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. In other words, Jesus having no place was not just an accident of his birth, it was the choice of his life. He wouldn't attach himself to any group or ideology and he would never settle down in one place or even with one person to make a family, despite what some fiction writers claim. Now look, I'm not saying that the desire to love and be loved, to have kids, to live in a good neighborhood, to set aside a little nest egg for retirement is somehow wicked ambition. 
I'm saying that thinking you'll find security in those things is spiritually unwise. Tonight, many sermons are gonna focus on the innkeeper and ask whether we will make room in our hearts for Christ to lodge. And I won't quibble with that homiletical tact, but I want you to see something different tonight for what it's worth. I want you to identify with the Christ who has identified with you. He may not be asking you to make room in your heart for him. He may be asking you to find your place with him. To live freely, joyously, and intentionally as one of those whose true place is always found in relationship to God and to the displaced of the world. The rabbis, in commenting on the story of Jacob when he had awakened from sleep by the Jabbok River and said, surely the Lord was in this place and I did not know it. Said that one of the names for God is Hamakom, the place. God is our place. Our place is a relationship with the one constant, dependable, and faithful presence in all reality, and we will only be at home when we are in a deeply trusting relationship with a God who is always with us and for us. And we'll only experience that relationship with God when we are in relationship to those who are experiencing displacement in various ways. Dorothy Day, the late Catholic social worker said, Christ is always with us, always asking for room in our hearts, but now it is with the voice of our contemporaries that he speaks, with the eyes of store clerks that he gazes, with the hands of office workers, slum dwellers, and suburban housewives that he gives. It is with the feet of soldiers and tramps that he walks, and with the heart of anyone in need that he longs for shelter. And giving shelter or food to anyone who asks for it or needs it is giving to Christ. Every week now, buses of migrants are arriving from El Paso to the Oak Lawn United Methodist Church. These are people who have no place. They have left their places of poverty and violence in search of a better place, a safer place, a place of hope, and volunteers welcome them, give them shelter, and help them move on to another place in a country where they will await their asylum hearing. Christ, I tell you, is there with them. We will find him there with them in that present day Las Posadas. And the same is true for the homeless who gather there for warmth when it is freezing outside like it has been this week. Michael Gerson died recently. He was a wonderful Christian and an inspiring writer, the former speechwriter for President George W. Bush and then Washington Post columnist. He was a critic of settled faith and faith that sought to settle down in the world, like Christian nationalists who would settle for an inhospitable country over a hospitable church. In a piece titled, The Hope of Christmas, penned during days when cancer was draining the life from him, he wrote, the whole Christmas story is pregnant with enigma and violated expectations. The creator pulls on a garment of blood and bone. Almighty God is somehow present in a fragile newborn. The deliverer of mankind is delivered, slimy with vernix, in a place smelling of dung. If God can come here amid the shame and straw, God can come anywhere. If God 
came here, God has come everywhere. God is with us. In enforced isolation and loneliness, God is with us. In chronic pain and degenerative disease, God is with us. In a shattered relationship or a cancer diagnosis, God is with us. In an intensive care unit or a mental ward, God is with us. In life and in death, God will not leave us or forsake us. That's it, right there, the meaning of Christmas and the good news of which the angels sing, God is our place because God has taken our place. Even when it feels to all the world that we have no place. Thanks be to God, amen.